Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm actually coming to you today from the top of Hamburg Mountain, which is a little north of Asheville. But I'm up here practicing my vision stretching. Um, if you remember from one of my previous videos about you know, going up to uh, somewhere where you can see really, really far, whether that's on top of a mountain or out by the ocean or just out in nature at a park, um, just letting your eyes have something to look at that are, that's very, very far away, very beneficial. Um, but for more information, you can watch the vision stretching video. In this video, I wanted to outline a daily routine for you. Um, I've been getting questions and requests about how to tie all these practices together. Because if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while or you've been watching my other Bates Method 101 videos, you've been learning these basic introductory practices like sunning and swinging and palming and, and etc. which is really important to know how to do them but then the next step is how to actually incorporate them into your vision practice because in order for you to succeed in the Bates method or to succeed in improving your vision naturally it's highly dependent upon daily frequency you know daily practice frequency and intensity so we'll, we'll touch on that at the end of this video, but for now I just kind of wanted to overview sort of what my practice looked like when I was going through this. Because remember, I've, I've been through this myself. I wore glasses for 15 years, and then with the help of my vision teacher, Dr. Jerry Ann Tabor, I was able to build my own home vision practice. And that's really what I attribute my success to, is doing it every single day until I no longer needed to do it anymore. So. When you begin building your own vision practice, first of all, it's important to know, as I've said a couple times already, that you have that intention to do it every single day. You have to take it seriously. You have to, if you really want to improve your vision, you have to fit these things into your day every day. It doesn't take much time, but and you'll see how that looks in just a minute. What I want you to do is to, to start every single day with your vision practice. Um, this is what I did just as a personal preference. I found that if I didn't do it first thing upon rising, <laughs> there's a, the chances of me doing it later diminished as the day went on because I would start doing other things. I get distracted. Other things would come up and, uh, before I would know it, the day would be over. So right when you wake up in the morning, start your day with your vision practice, even before you get out of bed, you know, right when you wake up, the very first thing you can do is stretch and yawn. So we talked about yawning a little bit in the computer vision syndrome video, video of how yawning while working on the computer is very, really good. But it's also the first thing you want to do right when you wake up. So just taking oh, a really big yawn, and you can try it while you're watching. Open your mouth as wide as you possibly can. Maybe even stick your tongue out and kind of wake up your whole face, your jaw, you know, it, it increases blood flow, oxygen, lymph flow, energy flow up to the eyes and the whole face, really. And it'll get your eyes nice and lubricated first thing in the morning. So yawning and stretching as well. You know, obviously stretching your, you know, whole body, all your limbs, your fingers, your toes, your wrists, your ankles, just kind of, you know, after laying still all night, it's good to kind of uh, loosen things up a little bit. And that also goes for your eyes as well. You can stretch your eyes first thing in the morning. And you can watch the yogic eye movement video um, for instructions about how to do that one. But you've got these really powerful muscles around your eyes too. And a lot of people think that they get rested overnight. Those eye muscles, you know, rest and relax overnight while you're sleeping. But what Dr. Bates found was that sometimes people with eye strain actually hold on to that overnight. So... It's really good to, you know, look in different directions, really explore the whole range of those eye muscles and sort of wake them up in the morning. And then you want to follow that yogic eye movement with some sort of relaxation, um, whether that is nose drawing, so closing your eyes in bed, maybe drawing some, some pictures or patterns or designs up on your ceiling, you know, while you're laying in bed, pretending like you've got your nose marker reaching up to your ceiling. Um, you can do some gentle eye massage, maybe just around the eye orbits, nice and gently. Um, or there's a bunch of acupressure points you can look for or uh, feel around the eye orbits that you can um, increase some more energy up to that area with those. You can do a little tapping 
around the eyes or around the face. Um, I like to do that in the morning as a way to stimulate more blood flow and, and tap on those sympathetic nerves that are connected with your eyes and your vision. Really, really good relaxation thing first thing in the morning after your eye movements, though, is palming. So, you know, rubbing your hands together after you've stretched all those muscles around the eyes, it's good to cover up the eyes and envision all those muscles, all six muscles around each eye, just all relaxing and letting go. Another thing that people sometimes think is that, you know, I was just sleeping overnight in the dark, so why would I need to bring more darkness? Well, the, the darkness that you achieve in palming when you cover up your eyes with your palms is so much darker than what you'll achieve in your room. Like, for example, you know, I've got these ambient street lights outside of my house that, you know, shine in even through the blinds and curtains and stuff and, and create a little bit of ambient light. So you just want to make sure you get that total 100% darkness with the palming. And you haven't even gotten out of bed yet. So you're starting your day in a very relaxing way um, with stretching and yawning, waking up the eyes and the face, um, and giving some relaxation to the eyes first thing in the morning. Your eyes are going to be so much happier, and they're going to thank you for taking care of them first thing. Now, right when you get out of bed, you can go right into your long swing. So, you know, whether that's in your room or if it's nice out, you can go outside and start to get some oxygen, some, some sunlight, and just start swinging your body 180 degrees from the left to the right, not really trying to look at anything or focus on anything. Actually, instead, you want to be more paying attention to the movement, the sense of motion. In other words, when you go this way, it kind of looks like the world goes that way. And then when you swing this way, it's the, it's the opposite. The world kind of looks like it goes that way. And a really easy way to see that is if you hold up your thumb and just look at your thumb as you're swinging, and then everything in the background just slides by kind of in a blurry uh, fashion behind you, and that's okay. You want to just, you want to start to perceive that oppositional movement. It's really relaxing for your eyes and your mind. You also want to do the long swing with your eyes closed. And when your eyes are closed, you want to remember that oppositional movement we were just speaking about. So even though your eyes are closed, you can't physically see anything, I'm still remembering everything moving in the opposite direction. Not only does that continue the relaxation, but it starts working on your memory, imagination, and visualization. Three very important factors in your vision improvement practice. So doing the long swing for five or six minutes, going through those three steps. You know, step one, arms down, eyes open. Step two, thumb up, eyes open. Step three, eyes closed. And you can do each step for as long as you'd like before you move on to the next one. And you're also in charge of the, the rhythm or the speed that you do the swing. If you're outside doing your swing, you can go right into sunning right after your long swing. So, in other words, just facing towards the sun in the sky with your eyes closed, pivoting your head side to side, just moving the head this time instead of the whole body. And same thing, you're in charge of the speed. You can go nice and slow. Keep your eyes nice and soft. Don't squint or squeeze them. Allow the light to shine on your closed eyelids for however long as is comfortable for you, whether that's five seconds or five minutes. You're in charge of how much light you take in. And it's actually kind of nice right now. It's a little overcast, so it's, it's not direct sunlight. So that's actually a really good opportunity for you to go outside and get started with the sun before you go out in the direct sunlight. Go out when it's a little cloudy. It's not quite as bright. And you can slowly and gently start to introduce yourself into the sunning practice in a very safe and gentle way, especially if you have any type of light sensitivity. After you do your sunning, you can head back inside and follow that up with a nice long palming session again. So balancing out the bright light and the darkness and the palming. And then that right there, you've already got a ton of practices under your belt for the day. And that whole thing I just described can be anywhere between, you know, 5 and 15 minutes. So all you have to do is set your alarm for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes earlier. Get up and set aside that time for yourself in the morning. 
take care of yourself first thing in the morning. Now, since I also practice yoga, after I would do my vision routine, then I would move into my more traditional yoga practice, doing some asanas and poses and stretches, some sun salutations, and then also have some time to sit in silence and some meditation. So if you have a meditation or a yoga practice, you can just sort of bundle them all together into this nice, really uh, great morning routine that you can start to do every day. And when you do it every day, it becomes automatic and it starts feeling amazing and you get excited to wake up and move into your self-healing practice for the day. Similar sort of routine at night too, right before you go to bed. Well, actually, um, you know, prior to that, you know, when the sun is setting in the evening, um, I'll go outside, do a little more sunning, you know, remembering that rule about the sunning where it's, you want to do it closer to sunrise or sunset. So it's a little lower in the sky, a little less intense. Um, so sunset, do a little more sunning. And then once it's dark outside, I try to be mindful of the ambient light inside. So I, I try and turn off the overhead lights or really bright lights and start to kind of wind down in terms of the brightness to, to help my um, melatonin start to be, become produced in the brain to help me get ready for bed because um, the bright lights and computer screens and stuff, they kind of inhibit the melatonin production and might make it harder for you to fall asleep, which might make it harder for you to wake up in the morning to do your vision practices. So now right before you're going to sleep though, it's good to do another round of the long swing and palming. So the long swing before bed, I do super slow. So you want to slow it down so it's very relaxing. Because if you do it kind of faster, like in the morning, it, it might actually kind of invigorate you, energize you. But at night, you want to slow it down to kind of get, get you ready to go to sleep. So same three steps. Eyes open and then eyes closed. Same thing, five or six minutes is fine. And then when you get down and lay in bed, I want you to grab a bunch of pillows, blankets, whatever you need to prop your elbows up to make you really, really comfortable so that you don't have to support your arms or shoulders because that won't last very long. You want to be able to rest your elbows on something nice and soft and supportive so that you can palm for extended periods of time. Um, whether you like to sit in silence, maybe use that as a meditation time or put on some music or a podcast or an audiobook or a guided visualization. If you can set aside some time in the evening to palm, you'll either, you know, do it for five or ten or fifteen, even more if you can, minutes. Or just palm for you know until you fall asleep. <laughs> That's happened to me a couple of times because it is so relaxing. And the darkness just really helps you transition into sleep. So that's the morning and the evening and the night routines. And then for me, somewhere in the middle, I would also set aside a chunk of time for some more vision building practices. Um, once I started getting more into the advanced practices um, that I was learning from my teacher, a lot of working with the eye charts to improve my actual visual acuity, that's what I would do in the middle of the day when I was kind of most alert, most energetic. And it, I had really good lighting, too, from the sun a lot of times to shine on my eye chart. So um, if you know any, any of the advanced practices, you can do those in the, in the middle of the day or just repeat some of the basic ones that you've learned on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to hopefully be adding another video about how to use the eye chart on your own. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you can learn some more of those advanced practices either in my book, Give Up Your Glasses for Good, or we can work together online over Skype. Um, that's really the, the primary thing that I, I teach my, my vision students is the more advanced practices and how to keep taking your vision practice even farther. So, or you can also look up and see if there's a, you know, a local Bates Method teacher in your area as well if you want that you know, face-to-face -face interaction. So that's kind of a, just a rough outline of, of sort of what my everyday routine looked like while I was in the very beginning of my vision practice, spending more time without my glasses, spending this, these amounts of time doing the practices. But there's also practices that I want you to be doing all day long. That's really what the ultimate goal of the Bates Method is. 
it's not just to learn these practices and, you know, do your eye exercises and then go back to your, your old habits and routines. You need to be learning how to use your eyes in a, in a better way 24 seven. So these, these types of habits that you can be doing or thinking about all day long include breathing. So nice, deep, rhythmic breathing. And I'm going to be doing another video about, um, about breathing and some different yogic breathing practices that can help you tap into your breathing and deepen it even more. Um, blinking, very nice, calm, regular blinking. We talked about that in the computer video as well. Uh, but also centralizing. So this is kind of an advanced idea from the Bates method um, that Dr. Bates described in his book, Perfect Sight Without Glasses. And I have a whole chapter devoted to it in my book because it's kind of... Uh, complicated or, or sometimes it takes a while to really understand or get it uh, but it, it's sort of a, a different way of using your eyes or looking through your eyes than you might be used to um, and that that requires its own video as well so um, I'll just briefly mention that so there, there's you, you want to practice the practices to learn the principle of the practice which a lot of them the principle is relaxation so once you do the practices enough, the relaxation will stay and it'll start to grow and it'll stick around automatically. You won't have to do the practices as much as you learn how to relax even more and it stays around. So that, that's just sort of a preview of what you may expect as the evolution of your vision practice is you may reach a point where you don't have to do this daily routine. You don't have to do these practices every day because you have internalized the principles of the practices. And my goal as a Bates Method teacher and vision coach is to help people integrate these practices into their pre-existing habits or activities or routines. So I want you to, the level of relaxation that you obtain from palming or sunning or swinging and the little flashes of clarity you get when you do relax your eyes and your mind, I want you to start to access all of that in other activities. When you're at work, when you're at school, when you're at home, anything that you're using your eyes for can technically be adapted into a Bates method or a vision practice, your vision practice. Your life can be your vision practice, which is, is pretty exciting to me when I learned that you know, it's not just this, you know, going through the motions, doing these exercises, these eye exercises. They're just the starting point. And once you practice them on, in a, on a daily basis for an extended period of time, weeks or months, then they become unnecessary because you have learned what they needed to teach you about how your eyes work, how to focus through relaxation. So, and keep in mind also that everybody's vision path or vision plan is unique. Everybody's vision uh, practices might look a little different. So what I say is definitely a good starting point or sort of a recommendation or a suggestion, but I would encourage you to make it your own and really, you know, explore uh, what fits into your schedule. Maybe you don't like doing things first thing in the morning, you know, feel free to kind of be flexible with it and sprinkle these uh, practices throughout your day. That's really you know, when it comes down to it, you can do these, these vision practices whenever you want, as needed. Whenever you, as you start to tune into your eyes more and feel when they start to feel strained or tired or tense, then that's a sign to do a relaxation practice, to give them a little break. Palm your eyes for a few minutes. Get up and swing. Go outside, do a little sunning and so forth. So it's really a, a fun uh, experience learning about yourself and listening to the messages that your body's sending you to to, to take better care of yourself throughout the day. So, yeah, I hope, I hope this helps kind of clear up or, or helps kind of, uh, will help you tie together your own vision practice. And, and feel free to maybe share your vision routine in the comments. Um, it might help other people, you know, brainstorm and think about how they might fit it into their day. Or if you have any examples of how you incorporate the Bates method into other activities that aren't, you know, eye exercises, that can be really helpful too. So thanks again for the questions and, and requests and, and keep them coming and I'll keep making these videos. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.